Welcome back everyone, Pal Ponder All Weather here. Happy Friday out there. We have a lot to talk about over the next seven to 10 days as a stronger cold front will be plunging southbound and we'll be watching two areas of disturbed weather into the Gulf of Mexico. So let's take a look at the overall setup. We can see this cooler pocket of air that's really diving down into the upper Great Lakes as well as into the Ohio Valley. Those temperatures are dropping in fall light conditions back behind it with those 20 if not almost 25 degrees at times below average temperatures so that's going to bring some really crisp and almost fall like air for those areas across the central and eastern two-thirds you can see the jet stream of what we're highlighting here you have a little bit more of a, a zonal flow that's actually coming on off the Pacific. So those areas out west, unfortunately, will be missing out on this uh, cool down because they'll be trapped under that ridge of high pressure. But if you live essentially in this zone right here, you're going to be feeling the effects of that cool down as that drop in temperatures are going to be plunging southbound. But we are watching this area of disturbed weather as a low pressure center just highlighted right on the coastal shores it's bringing some very heavy rain especially along those coastal areas and it doesn't look to go anywhere anytime soon in fact there's going to be another one that's going to be into the southern gulf of mexico that we'll be watching starting on on monday but what's going to be significant back behind this cooler shot of air is the drier air this is wiping out all the humidity folks yeah so this is going to be feeling like fall like conditions as those cooler less humid air mass will be on the back side you can actually see there's 33 percent in the heat of the afternoon that is some very dry pleasant like air but you can see definitely right there along the coast, right? That's where that area of low pressure that you're going to be inundated with very heavy rainfall. They've got flash flood watches in a, you know, for those areas across Louisiana, Mississippi, as well as into uh, Alabama. But look at some of these. We're, we're even talking it's cool enough to even produce some record lows, folks. So this is coming Saturday morning. Yeah, we could be looking at 35 degrees up there in Wisconsin. 38 as well even low 40s dropping all the way down into michigan northern portions of illinois so you're going to feel this cooler shot of air in a big way and those 50s drop all the way down into arkansas by the time we head into saturday morning and it gets even better heading into sunday because that cooler air just drops a little bit further south so now we're talking up to 12 record lows so anywhere you see highlighted in the circled area that's where you possibly could break a record low so yeah i'm talking to you in kentucky ohio back into west virginia look at the 50s dropping all the way down into mississippi into alabama into georgia even portions of texas and oklahoma are going to get in the action with some 50s showing up on the map that is definitely by far the coolest shot of air actually all the way back since april so you're definitely going to be feeling this front in a big way and it's going to last at least several days with that cooler shot of air as that pocket of 40s really doesn't go anywhere highlighted across the ohio valley and it spreads the wealth of cooler anomalies further south and really pleasant light conditions as the humidity values will be dropping if and at sometimes into the teens and 20s if not 30 percent range so yes extremely dry air back behind this cooler shot of air but what we're concerned about right now on the satellite picture you can see where the initial cool front is right so you've got this cool front that's going to be bringing some I said it showers along with it as this drops further south, but mainly down here into the Gulf of Mexico, you can see the convection. We've got this kind of stalled frontal boundary that's highlighted across this region. And then we just have this conveyor belt of moisture with this area of low pressure that's just got light steering currents aloft really can't go anywhere and it, so it gets trapped, especially it feels the effects of that cooler shot of air coming in from the north. So that's going to trap all the moisture essentially along the coastal areas. That's why we have those flood watches in place and can, you know, can the consistency of the well above average precipitation, you know, your PWAT values, your available potential amount of 
liquid in the atmosphere approaching almost three inches per hour rainfall rates. That's why we've got some significant flooding that could unfold across areas of uh, New Orleans, getting into Gulfport, maybe even Pensacola. And that's the first shot. This is uh, this is the first shot of you know the, the the rain that's going to be taking place across this region. But you can see the drier air, right? I mean, look at all that brown. That is the drier air that comes back behind that front, sneaking all the way for those areas into Louisiana. So yes, I know you've been dealing with high humidity for an extremely long time. So it's really pleasant to get this cool front and wipe out the humidity, even though it's going to be fairly brief for a couple of days but it's going to be feeling really nice for sure so what we're definitely concerned about is just the extreme amount of rainfall so this is this is the rainfall just between now and say monday morning right so you've got dry air air back behind it so it's pretty pleasant light conditions you have, you've got the ridge of high pressure out west so that's why you don't have any rain coming out of those clouds out out west but then back behind the cool front you also have that dry air that comes back behind it so much of the united states really doesn't get much of rainfall over the coming days it's really compressed all the way down into the deep south and yes those are significant totals now luckily the highest totals look to remain out into the open waters of the gulf of mexico but right now we're just watching this because just got low steering currents, folks. It just doesn't go anywhere anytime soon. This is going to be could be a multi-day event that could actually last. And I'll show you a good six to seven days. We could be talking about this a week from now, folks. This is how long it could be literally sitting and spinning down there into the Gulf of Mexico. Well, because what we're looking at, we've got two areas of disturbed weather. We've got this one just right, the National Hurricane Center has highlighted that 10% probability just kind of off the coast. And that's what the, that's the one that's meandering, just, you know, just kind of meandering around. And then also we've been tracking this disturbance off from the, you know, from Africa for like 12 days. And it finally gets into the Southern portions of the Gulf of Mexico by the time we hit into Monday. And look, I mean, it really doesn't go anywhere. In fact, this one up here out off the southeast coast of Texas could actually actually drift further south and kind of meet up with the one down there in the southern Gulf and almost kind of merge together and just kind of sit there and spin. And they do have an invest on this, which is invest 90 LL. But yeah, the, this is over a six day time span, folks. So you can see this this low pressure just doesn't go anywhere anytime soon. This is between now and Thursday on the European ensembles and the GFS kind of implies the same thing. So you've got both global models kind of hinting at this area of low pressure just doesn't have any steering currents to work with. And it just gets trapped with all the dry air to the north and all the moist air to the south and it just rings out the precipitation over and over and over again and a lot of the same places because we could be picking up some a lot of extensive heavy rain i was reading this morning tampa bay is already 20 inches above average for the year unfortunately you got a lot more to come with this these two systems they're going to be unfolding over the next week but look at the dry air folks i mean this is what we're talking about especially as we head into next week and early next week with the all the brown showing up on the map with the ridge out west and the dry air coming out behind the back side of that cool shot yeah pretty rare to see during the daytime hours in the heat of the afternoon in oklahoma with humidity values in the 30 percent range folks that tells you that's a dry air mass and the fall light pleasant light conditions it's time to open up the windows because you've got a good chunk of the country is going to be feeling this fall like air i'd probably say about 60 percent of you guys unfortunately the western regions are going to kind of miss out on this uh, cooler shot of air but look at the rainfall over the 72 72 hours this is from monday to Wednesday morning. So that is 72 hours, like nothing, hardly anything for most of the lower 48. It's just all really confined around the southern portions of the Gulf of Mexico into the deep south, right along the I-10, I-20 corridor. Those areas could get pummeled with very heavy rain and extensive flooding over days and days and it's really not until thursday that we try to 
somewhat try to kick it out of there because finally the ridge starts to break down at least a little bit. I mean, it's very brief out west, but it does give you at least some reprieve in some areas, even with some showers underneath it and try to sneak through the drier airs aloft. But what's gonna, what's that's gonna happen is it's finally gonna be able to somewhat pull this system a little bit further north by then. So for, it should start to enter portions of the southeast coast and here's the overall ensembles by thursday hinting at it finally maybe comes ashore by uh, off the southeast coast of of texas and getting into uh, louisiana and again with you know just more heavy rain you know for those areas and the gfs kind of implies the same thing even just a little bit slower so we'll be watching this but yeah you get the picture it just doesn't really go anywhere any time soon and yes going into next week we'll look at the jet stream right so we've got the change that's happening a little bit on thursday heading into next week with that trough that's going to be finally coming out west given that heat dome that heat ridge a little bit of a reprieve even though it likely looks to be subtle because by the time we head into saturday going into the next weekend look at the jet stream folks well to the north so now the zonal pattern that you're in now out west pretty much takes over for the entire lower 48. So what the, what does a zonal pattern mean for the lower 48? Hot. <laughs> I mean, it warm, right? So you, you got the cooler shot of air and now you got the ridge is going to be coming back and going to be shifting for those areas out west and eventually shift into the central U.S., and eventually get into the eastern two-thirds of the U.S. So by the time we head into next Sunday, most of the lower 48 will be trapped under that zonal flow pattern. And we'll be looking at some pretty warm conditions, you know, for the middle of September by then. So guys, I appreciate you guys uh, watching. Do like this video. Definitely hit the subscribe button. And catch me next update. Wire protect you before and after storm.